Now to the dramatic resignation of Shadow Attorney General Julian Lisa from the front bench, who found himself Lisa, who found himself starkly at odds with Peter Dutton's decision to oppose the Indigenous voice to Parliament. After years spent working towards the establishment of an Indigenous voice, Lisa resigned to be able to campaign for a yes vote. I spoke to him earlier. Julian Lisa, welcome to 7.30. Thanks, Sarah. Why is a national voice so critical for improving the lives of Indigenous people that it justified your resignation? Well, I've been a long-term supporter of The Voice. Um, I worked with constitutional conservatives and Indigenous leaders over 10 years ago to find a way to have a form of constitutional recognition that both could support. Um, I think the great benefit of a voice is that it's a practical um, application. It's an idea who, at whose very core is that when you consult people, you make better policy um, about them. And as we know, Australia is a great country. But unfortunately, we have this gap in terms of the performance of Indigenous people in relation to all of our social and economic issues. And actually, you said this um, in, the, in the speech you made yesterday delivering your resignation that you believed the voice would move the dial on health and housing, education, security, the economy for Indigenous people. What is it about your colleagues that they don't understand? Well, look, I, I've had a particular experience um, and gone on a particular journey in relation to this. Um, uh, and that's the reason I've made the decision I have. I suppose I've come to my view because of my long experience in these debates about constitutional recognition. I see that the Constitution is a practical and pragmatic charter of government. I see having an institution in the Constitution that provides for consultation about policy ensures that you make better policy because you're talking to the people uh, who are affected by that policy directly. Now, last night, Ken Wyatt on this program said that he believed there was no form of words for the voice proposal that Peter Dutton would have agreed to. This morning, you disagreed strongly with what Mr Wyatt had said. Can you explain to us now exactly what form of words would have convinced Mr Dutton to support the Yes campaign? Well, I think Peter Dutton came to this with an open mind. Um, that's the most important thing to say here. The fact that he appointed me as the Shadow Minister for Indigenous Australians and the Shadow Attorney General, that we combined the portfolios, indicates that uh, he had an open mind about these issues. But what he about the for, words for, that for, he could have deep, supported? Well, no, I, I was asked about uh, was there a way he could have supported mm -hmm. this referendum, not with the words in particular. Um, and I, I think... Um, the coalition has come up with with a policy of having of supporting constitutional recognition. We've always supported constitutional recognition. I'm sorry to jump in. Let's go back to the matter at hand, which is what Ken Wyatt said, rather than the general idea of the of the voice. So what Ken Wyatt said very specifically was that he did not believe that there was a form of words that Mr Dutton was ever going to support in terms of the referendum. Do you believe there is a form of words that Peter Dutton could have supported? Well, I think if the government had set out a proper process here to actually come up with a form of words, rather than putting a form of words on the table, in other words, uh, having something like a constitutional convention or a joint parliamentary committee, we called it. It was for enough this. for you, wasn't it, to, well, to, but, but to I, find I, a way to agree? But I've been involved in this debate a very long mm. time. I've got my foot on the sticky paper years ago in relation to this. So I is set it just, I'm going, to use, I'm going to use, excuse me for interrupting, because I, I, I heard a little bit of this, we heard a little bit of that yesterday, but just just to stay with this, are you saying that simply Peter Dutton and his colleagues who disagree with him don't know enough, don't understand enough about the plight of Indigenous people to be no, I'm, in the position that I'm you're in? No, I'm absolutely not saying that. I mean, Peter Dutton is today in Alice Springs. It's his second or third visit there. I've been to remote communities with him all around the country. He cares deeply about improving the plight of Indigenous Australians and I support him in his approach to that. But where we disagree is that I believe that the voice in the Constitution can make a difference. Mm. Peter and I both support the idea of local and regional voices, uh, but he doesn't believe that the voice should be in the Constitution. That's where the difference is. And that's the reason. Uh, it's not just Peter's view, it's the view of our party room and our shadow, shadow cabinet. And that's why I resigned yesterday, in order to give myself the freedom to campaign for the voice. So Mr Dutton described the national voice as made up of Indigenous elites and academics. Is that your understanding of what a national voice would look like? Look, as I said this morning, I'm not going to provide a running commentary on things that colleagues have said. That's not the role that I'm going to play in this debate. It's quite a significant I'm, description, though, of I'm, something that's now under debate nationally. I'm going to make a contribution to this debate by advocating for changes to the model to simplify it and then to be campaigning yes. That's the, that, that's the view I'm going to be putting forward. I'm not going to be uh, out there debating colleagues. That's not a role that I'm going to play. Let me just come back to the leader because you have remained in the Liberal Party. You're still going to be an MP in the Liberal Party. Um, does it disturb you that Peter Dutton is using the language that he's using to deride the national voice? Are you concerned he's going to be constantly repeating these claims between now and the referendum? 
I support Peter Dutton's leadership 100%. I've uh, travelled with him to remote communities. Yes, I, I think let's come concerns. back to my question, though. He's Look, made a number of statements about The Voice. He's derided it as being made up of, going to be made up of, um, elites, academics, a Canberra voice, as, as if that were an insult. My question is, are you concerned about the kind of language he's using to describe The Voice? Well, and Sarah, if so, will you talk to him about it? Sarah, I, I'm, I'm not going to be here to police language the colleagues use, and that's not what I'm going to be doing in this debate. I've resigned my position, but I may remain a loyal member of the Liberal team. But I will say this. The other aspect that I am trying to get the government to change on is to commit to the local and regional voices. Mm -hmm. If the government commits to the rollout of the local and regional voices, it's it's very difficult to say that this is just a body that's based in Canberra. But you don't because believe it's just a body based in Canberra, do you? Well, I, I believe this. we are dealing with the constitutional amendment here, mm. and I believe that we need to focus on the constitutional amendment. But because we don't have the detail about the national body, because the government hasn't committed to the local and regional uh, voices... Nor have they, I, to be I, clear, I think, ruled it out. Yes, but the obvious thing after the Calma Langton report was to respond to that report, to follow their roadmap, mm. to commit to the rollout of the local and regional voices first, as the coalition did in government. Government, uh, those voices cascading up to the national voice. Um, if you want people to come on board, we need to find common ground, and I believe we can find common ground by adopting what I'm calling the press club model, which I outlined in my speech but last But notwithstanding, week. you're prepared to stand by. You've been lauded in the last, in the last 24 hours for making a, a powerful moral decision, but you are prepared in the months ahead to stand by and say nothing if your colleagues use language that derides what, will, what would be the voice if the referendum succeeds. I'll tell you what I'm going to do in the months ahead. I'm going to firstly campaign while this committee process is running for a better, simpler model mm. that more Australians can support because the referendum's in the mid-50s at the moment and that's not a successful spot. I want to see more Australians come on board and support it. That's why I want to see common ground. And secondly, I'm going to be arguing strongly for The Voice. I'm going to be positively making the case uh, as to why uh, The Voice will make a difference to Indigenous people and why it's needed as part of our political structures. Let me ask you a political question. The Liberal Party loses an historic by-election in Aston and days later Peter Dutton announces he's going to campaign against The Voice, the Prime Minister's key initiative for this term. How do you avoid the logic that this whole move is political, a way of giving the Liberal Party a clear focus in opposition? Well, I think you've got to treat each issue on its merits, and that's certainly the way I've been approaching this, and I know that's the way colleagues approach this. Colleagues have taken this seriously. I know that there have been colleagues around the country who've held forums on this in their communities. I know colleagues with Indigenous communities have gone out and talked to and consulted them, and there are a range of views in Indigenous communities as there are uh, in the broader community. You're saying it wasn't a At political the... decision? Look, at the end of the day, um, all Australians are going to have to go and vote for this on, on one Saturday in October, November, December. Um, that's important that uh, Australians have confidence uh, in, in this. It's not about what's happened in the Liberal Party room or the National Party room or the Government Party room. This is a decision for Australians and that's where I think the focus has to be. Julian Lisa, thank you very much indeed for talking to us. Thank you, Sarah.